Welcome to another episode of Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. My name is Ossie Godwin and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Benny Ak. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? What's going well, on? How are you? I'm all right. What do you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to say? Mm-hmm. Are you so? sure? I'm going to be a good girl from now on, guys. No, I don't want to be a good girl. Mm-mm. I'm trying to be... There's no fun in being good. Mm. Oh, tell them. Mm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Spicy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it a bit of bad. I mean. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. Bounce is Okay. All right. Nigerian singer Sheyushi says everyone is forgetting that people have been and are dying from malaria and typhoid daily and that the coronavirus is apparently not as deadly as common influenza. She's questioning why our government is yet to do something about malaria. She also encouraged people to study and research more on the virus instead of jumping on wagons. Also, as part of efforts to curb the spread of the virus, the new African shrine has suspended all programs. This was announced by um, Femi Kuti via his Twitter mm. page. So yeah, that's I think that's the update on coronavirus from the entertainment side. Yeah. <laughs> from the entertainment side. Yeah. Right? Mm. But again, it's it's a new it's a new virus. I think they're still trying to understand how it works. But to be honest, malaria, loss of fever, is killing more people right here at home than like, I think coronavirus might be able to do. And the big question is why hasn't the government done something about malaria, um, loss of fever that is actually an epidemic right here? It's just known to us around here. I mean, mm. from from a local government in one of the states. And so why can't we still just totally? You know, eradicate the kind of funds fever. that are being released you know? or saying it should be set aside for this is amazing. Yeah, and I hope it's true. My my thing is that human beings are selfish. We are inherently so, and there's nothing you can do about that. The reason why coronavirus is a lot more serious is because it's contagious, um, and it's always been like that. Uh, we, I remember the rich and the poor. Yes, and and that's when it becomes everybody's problem. Business, yeah. Um, I remember when smallpox was smallpox was in. I was I was I don't even think I was born yet, but I remember watching that documentary and it was like that. Like the response was very swift and it was very effective because of how contagious it is. So it's just natural that people would take this more seriously. Yeah, this is but I also thing. want to but say beyond though, the natural that thing, Nigeria has a problem of. Um, what's the word now? They don't take anything serious. We don't take anything serious, well, mm, and, and that's a problem. Because uh, for me, I think that with malaria, we have done quite a lot for people. We haven't solved everybody's malaria, and people are still dying from malaria today. But I know that um, there has been a lot of subsidization for it, for malaria drugs. There's many, many, I don't many think that's how to solve people malaria. I who think are if you want to solve a problem, helping you go with to the roots. So we know that uh, um, uh, mosquitoes come from when you have dirty places, damp waters and all that. Why is Lagos still one of the most dirty places to live in in Nigeria? What I don't exactly think the government can doing? clean your house for you, though. That's a, like no. a, a deeper problem. It's They're giving the you house. mosquitoes. I'm not saying that what, there isn't space for improvement, but I don't want it to... I don't, I'm, not in the, I'm not supporting the idea that we're not doing anything about malaria. We are. I, I think the numbers not. have dropped drastically from at least my parents' time. Um, the numbers for Lhasa is still... It's not as if they are not... Um, what's it called? They're abandoning the people to just die, which is the way, way it's sounding to me, and I don't really think that that's what's happening. But yes, there is obviously an out, a blown up proportion, proportional differences between how they're focusing on coronavirus versus malaria. But that's just me. I feel, I feel there's a whole lot we can do. I mean, for other um, epidemic that has that has um, ravaged Nigeria as a, as a person, lots of people is one of them, and malaria. And do I think people should still be dying of malaria in the 21st century? I, I, I pretty much doubt it. There's so much. There's so much out there we can do to make sure nobody yeah. dies one more day of malaria. It's nothing that should be killing anybody again. And so to wake up again and people still die of malaria fever, it's just shocking. You know, and so that, that's, that's a failure of government. It's a failure of leadership. And we can't take that. We can't even exonerate them. If they do what they're supposed to do, who wants to be talking in 2020 that we have Nigerians dying of malaria fever? I feel like you, you know? I, I don't think you all, everybody that dies from malaria are just poor people. Like, there's people no, who are well. I don't think so. so it's I'm, not I'm just, the government cannot that, not, they can't the, stop people from dying from malaria. Malaria should, malaria should be for all our countries and We should be talking about malaria still in 2020. Yeah. Right. That's just what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, hopefully Fair the enough. right authorities will do the right thing and keep up the good work if there's any, like Ife Omai has pointed out. So moving on to more bizarre story, man arrested for reportedly digging Kobe Bryant's grave. Mm. 
I don't know what he was looking for, but yes. That's, that's just, that's, <laughs> it's so, it's <laughs> morbid. It must mm. have a morbid sense of humor. I don't even understand it. I mean, what is he looking for? Like to confirm, it? is he really dead? Is yeah, it, possibly. Is it so much a fight and he still can't believe it that could be? I think he has Kobe's a mental gone. issue. It, it should be. It needs to be checked in. I mean, some psychiatric evaluation assessment needs to be done on this yeah. man. You know what I mean? It's quite unfortunate. And the point is, this, this is a very private graveyard. Mm -hmm. Where hmm. were the security men? To the extent he dug it's deep, this, yeah, he dug deep enough. I, I want to assume, I want to believe that th this is America for Christ's sake, and it's a private grave, maybe for rich folks. Yeah. You know what happened to the surveillance camera? To the extent he dug enough. No. Well, whoever is on duty will not put in so much effort and stress to watch over. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not me being excessive, but I'm just saying. Right. That's just a take a joke. snack and, you know, but it's all right. Um, I, I, it, you know, it happens a lot with celebrities when you're life is so out there so people start to well. feel like they really know you yeah. and it's interesting to see how de somebody else's death that, and they, they, they don't have a you know a connection like a blood connection just to see how like powerful people you know how powerful the connection is with watching celebrities that you yeah. almost feel like you know them and it seems like this person has built that connection with him so much that he wants to go out. I don't even want to dig up the family members that I have that are in the ground. More or less now somebody that I don't even know personally. So yeah, it is definitely something off. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it makes me wonder as well that how many people are digging things uh, for, uh, from other people because i don't if it's a crazy if it's a crazy man then there's other crazy people digging other people's graves and i wonder what they're yeah, doing we with had that similar case too with um the popular dj from i can't remember the african country now but i think dj arafat when he was supposed to be buried and you're like no they need to open the courts to see that this is him that they cannot believe that he's dead and also mm. so that's fan love and fan connection is something i cannot explain because mm, I, yeah. I don't understand it but i know it exists and i think it's is to be healthy for anyone who is that connected to put some checks and mm. boundaries and be safe all right you want to add no well i was going to say that because um it's not even just for dead people like you see because <laughs> 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 it made me when you were talking it just made me think that how that is so much of an invasion but that happens with people who are even alive uh, yeah. like you find people who are going you and stalking who are you dating now what is yeah. happening which is what turns them to trolls like yeah. turn behavior. them to trolls online yeah, yeah. yeah but the last time you came out to tell us this and that so won't you give us an update I'm like ah, it's, it's kylie's it's kylie's um comments that freak me out they're mm. like you moved your frame um, your your picture wow. frame from this corner to this corner is everything okay, love? It's just like, they oh, notice the frame. From the simplest thing. Like it's okay. intense. Wow! It's time for a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing more stories. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to dollar, everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. That's why they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo! Sleeping early. Sleeping early. Welcome back. A former prosecutor who ran the sex crimes unit in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office has sued Netflix on Wednesday for defamation over her portrayal in When They See Us, claiming the miniseries about the Central Five Park fabricated both her statements and actions related to the case. Former prosecutor Linda alleges the series shows her as the mastermind behind a racist plot to obtain convictions at any cost. The now crime novelist is seeking damages from Netflix series director Eva DuVernay and writer Atika Locke, saying the portrayal damaged her personal and professional reputations. A personal and professional reputation. Then she should come out and give us a true, true story because mm. for all I care, I mean, this was, this was a true life story, right? 
And if you have a problem with portrayal, then maybe you should tell us what really happened. I mean, why four innocent men were convicted guilty and they were meant to... Four innocent young, young boys. Men, minus, boys. Boys. Kids. Minus, teenagers. You know, made, were, were made to serve term for a crime they didn't commit. Finally, it's when the real... Zero evidence. Yes. Yeah, when mm -hmm. the real um, crime perpetrator came up, I mean, that, that was what brought about their freedom. And so she feels slighted or feel, feels misrepresented. I wanted to tell us really what happened because she was part, she was part of that investigative channel. She was in charge. So let us know exactly what happened then. Tell us the story and from it's your such angle. A, it's, Give us the story from your own angle. It's you know? such a soppy victim cry. Like we're talking it's about so, four, four lives. lives. They were chained With forever. many, 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 many years of being stuck in prison, first of all, not in a park or home, mm -hmm. in prison. Right? Well, let's even talk about what that does to you. And then you've had your whole the career. Your you've 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 had your whole career. You've had everything, and then somebody comes out finally to say their voice, and it stings you, and you're running off to the court to make it fit. It's such. A, no, I don't want to be offensive, it's too but it's sounds, sounds yeah, like a white people thing. Like you see them in That's subways, it. they will make a racist comment. The black person defends themselves, and they're like, "Oh my God, you're attacking yeah, me." It's like get over this. This um, thing, I feel. I, uh, this is me personally. If this woman was actually truly misjudged, I don't still think it is enough to take away from what happened to those boys and then make it about yourself. If I came out with a tweet or a book or a video or an interview to say that this is my story and I this with, with what I people got this is read. what I, people will read that but then to now go and go to sue the Netflix it's like are you against this men still mm. because, because and that's what I have a problem yeah, with it's, it's beginning to sound looking that way so if you feel you have a different story to tell let's have your perspective to it and not come on and now um, trying to make trying to make a mess of people's own reality it yeah. was their experience and these guys they were in jail for as long as six to 13 years different convictions mm. you know what i mean you can't they can't get that part of their life back again no matter what it is whether you like it or not their lives were altered by that singular incident not talking about the trauma they had to go through knowing you ahead i mean mm -hmm. we so didn't I, I don't do know this you know but because we had to uh, i want to, to know what she wants to say because they persecuted three of them with zero evidence like not no evidence one so i want to know what she wants to say that she didn't didn't know she didn't feel like it or she didn't know there was there wasn't any evidence, evidence. yes like she can't say that so uh, uh, and I, uh, maybe i understand that maybe she didn't intentionally want that for those men but i don't think she tried enough to oh, avoid I think, that you know, yeah. i think i would understand if she comes out to say i was racist at the time and now i'm a better person because you right. cannot say you did not understand you're a prosecutor you, somebody was convicted without an evidence yeah. Young boys, not older men. Do you understand? So there mm. is, I don't know. We'll see how this plays out in yeah. court. I think we'll follow the story. Say. Yeah, we'll follow the story. So moving on to a story that will be close to Ife Omai's heart. Oh, God. Feminism <laughs> is destroying our society, destroying or promoting hate, um, causing gender war, causing diversity. Funny how some feminists are attacking their fellow ladies for saying they aren't in support of feminism. This is toxicity. I think it's high time we understand the fact that we can have equal right but we all aren't equal can a female footballer be getting same pay as the male how come marriage and relationships no longer last since we began to push this feminism agenda across the globe are we really making progress or we are moving backward the only thing i'm not in support of is a lady living on that same roof with an abusive partner being a woman alone is a privilege on its own we really need to stop looking for what isn't missing and pick ourselves up from where we miss the road if we continue to live like this with all this hate and toxicity in 10 years time there won't be any couple we can point a finger to and refer to as husband and wife my generation has missed the target let's go back to our drawing board and re-strategize please and this is coming from a twitter user um, by the handle at t classic T classic. Mm. No, not that T classic. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm more tired. I think so. I want you to go no, first. No, no, no. Um, no. Benny. Benny. So, okay, you want me to go first? Mm -hmm. I absolutely have nothing against feminism, right? Um, everybody, the, the world we live in, it's, it's, it's a patriarchal world. They call it a man's world, and it's been fashion in such a way that everything is adverse against a woman. Yeah. You know, and say if a woman is rising up to say, no, they, they, want in there, they want to be heard, they want to be recognized, they want to be given the space to be what they want to be. No, no man should have a problem with that. Yeah. All right, because unfortunately, even our cultural, traditional system here is also against the woman. And in the life of me, I'm like, what have they done so bad that would make <laughs> you, know? you constantly want to put them under? Mm. A woman should be heard. She has the right to aspire to become anything she wants to be. 
All right, she's not just a confinement in your kitchen and your bedroom. She's not um, a, a piece of acquisition like your furniture. All right, she's a human being. She's a human being as equal as you are. Yes, by function of role, we, women give birth, yeah. men cannot do that too. You even got to respect them for that. You know, so our society is such a way that men feel, and this is the problem, because many men feel uh, the traditional roles is, is changing. Those things that used to make men feel like men, mm. providing for family, putting clothes on women's back, food on the table, roof over their head. And many women can do that and much more right now. Mm. So a man feels, Definitely. a man is threatened by that. You know, a weak so, one. The weak one, not all men, you know. Yeah. So some men feel threatened by that, you know. And that's why we tell you once a woman is so successful, no, I can't mm -hmm. date her. Mm. It is a distinct problem. You've got yeah. an issue, man, you, that you, you need do. to solve. Mm -hmm. You know, so not until every man, and many men, many men, I could say as much as 99% of men, are dealing with an issue of identity. They don't yeah. really know who they are. Yeah. And so they project their insecurities, their mm. frustrations on the women in their life, right. the relationships they have. So you see a man who constantly hears a woman, it's out of frustration of, of himself and himself. It's inadequacies and it's, right. it's not being complete in himself. You know, thinking that way, he's, he's, ex, he's exercising his, his manliness on this mm. woman. That doesn't make you a man. Mm. Yeah. You know, so uh, there's another angle to it again I don't appreciate. You know, um, we have some women who men, the men in their life have, have treated so badly. Yeah. They, they jump on this bad wagon of feminism to feel it's an attack against men. You know, yeah. it's, let me take vengeance, men. You know, yeah. They, yeah they, we, can't, we can't discard those people who have joined this bad wagon. Yeah. Those are the people I don't really appreciate because it's not necessarily a fight against men. Mm. Of course it's not. Right, it's not. Yeah, yeah. We're, pushing, we're pushing for a cause to so say, you know what, yeah. we want equality. For everyone. We want gender equality. We don't, we don't want gender disparity in mm. the workplace and society. Give us a chance to be. Mm -hmm. All right? But um, patriarchy still rules. Yeah. yeah. And so, so it's going to take, it's going to take a real man. Yeah. So you know what, I'm going to do one in my life, I'm just going to be the, the wind beneath your wind and make you become everything possible you want so to be. So basically, everything she has blamed on feminism is not the fault of feminism. Yeah. No. No, it isn't. Um, people will be threatened when there is change. It has always happened oh, every yeah. single time. Even as as simple as, as, as a simple thing like relationships. If Benny and I are friends and I start to change my boundaries or my tolerance, there is disruption. Yeah. So now imagine that on a larger yeah. scale of things. Yeah. Um, the idea that re marriages don't work anymore because of feminism is like stumbling people. But I say that as a victory because then it just shows from, that to begin with, the marriage itself wasn't built on something right. Mm. If I'm empowering a woman and your marriage scatters, the marriage should have not existed at all. I also don't think marriages don't last anymore. Just that the marriages that don't last gets publicized much more than the ones that are just okay. And if, if jumping on that, statistically speaking, we don't see marriages as often anymore. Mm -hmm. But the divorce rate has actually dropped. Gone high. You know, it's dropped. Because, dropped. yeah, we don't see people marrying very often mm -hmm. and we don't see that many divorces because people are not marrying. At least the statistics that I've seen recently, that's what's happening. Yeah, because people are not, people are, people don't need that. Let, let, please, it's not about marriage. Back yeah. to feminism. <laughs> yeah. Um, her, I actually engaged with her on Twitter, and somebody said to her that, "Oh, pardon us for trying to fight for our rights and even fight for men's rights because if one is oppressed, the other is overwhelmed." Oh yeah. So what? What? Sorry to sorry for us to do that. Blah blah blah. And she made everything clear and kind of like gave the true definition of feminism, not the other solis. And she replied and said, "K." And that's when I knew there that there was a problem. So mm -hmm. I tweeted and I said, K, okay, then that means that this tweet wasn't to educate people or try and learn. You wanted to bring people down. There's, yeah. a, there's a thing going on with women. And, and I understand. I'm not trying to blame her. I understand where it's coming from, but it's still BS. Um, that if I say, no, pick me, I'm different. Guys, you see, I'm, not, I'm on your side. It looks better mm -hmm. than for me to say, men, you are doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is. Yeah. As far as so I'm there, concerned. Uh, there are a lot of them on Twitter, actually. Yes. They there, go there out to deliberately Twitter. do this type of tweets to attract men. Yeah. And of course, there are a lot of patriarchal men that are ready to say, oh, this is a type <laughs> that speaking I the made. truth is. Yeah. And then when mm. they get into it, they come back to give us some thread on Twitter. I mean, that, that's what happens. Yeah, mm. I, I just feel that the whole, the whole movement of feminism has been infiltrated by, like I said earlier, by women who just feel you know what they stand for me to take my vengeance against men. And, mm. and that's you can't what win. it's about. You know, because to try to change, to try to change a philosophy, mm -hmm. a system, you create a, a structure. And as I feel, it, not until they start changing their, their, their mentality, it's not a we against them. 
it's not but have you noticed that people you know? uh, people spend too much time and they don't do that with any other ideology and every other ideology has this problem yes. where somebody else comes and infiltrates the actual original thing mm -hmm. have you noticed yes. that with feminism they they latch onto this bad side more so than the yeah, story like we keep saying that society and exactly you know, that. So exactly that's and like it. i always say men have not been trained to understand this diversity right now yeah. or this kind of conversation yeah so the training is just starting yeah and you won't expect someone who has been wired a certain type of way all his yeah. life to, to just suddenly switch, switch and understand so yeah. it's most times when they come from that angle it's understandable so if i'm supposed to engage you if i think i should engage you i would but if i think it's not then i'll say okay you know yeah. what find someone who is yeah. um i mean there's every there's a water for every cup do you understand so yeah. if you say this is how you want to live your life there are women who do we'll not, fit that category, you know, yeah. fit that category but we're still so going to keep on it. going and i yeah. think slowly but, when it but comes surely to it would... standards and all that there is no compromise yes i mean so and yeah, when it comes to life, health things can, we can't we cannot yeah. compromise you know, I, th yeah. I think i have a problem with any guy out there who when a woman decides you know to raise her standards and tell her this is how i want you to relate and treat me and talk to me you begin to tag her disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is just that just sheer. I mean, you got you got to fix your head up. You know what I mean? I think I think um, one. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So at the end of the day, this is it. I, I have a problem with most of these. Um, well, not a problem per se. You know, when this group of women come together and say they want to empower the woman. You know, for everyone empowered out there and goes back to a man who is dealing with a problem. The empowerment is, is, is futile. You're not going to achieve what you want to achieve. Okay. Our wholeness as a society is highly dependent on both of our wholeness. I need to be whole, she needs to be whole. And so many men right. need to come to the place where they realize, you know what, I have a problem, I need help. But we've been taught as a man, you're not supposed to express emotions. Mm. So you're when you're but I think that, I think that, that the men, the men should be involved. Yeah, and I think yes. that the feminist men, men should, should start, start having, having that conversation. We should start I, having I, conversations I, as a man because many men out there need healing. Yes, the men absolutely. Who, who have been, they've been, They've been, um, a whole lot has happened to them. They've been violated. They've been, many men out there feel inadequate because society has told them once you're unable to do this, mm. it, you're not qualified as a man. I think the, so, the, we, the, both genders have issues. The only reason why I think feminism, even the way it was coined, the word feminism, is because the most desperate people that needed help were females. Yeah. But we all do need help. And, and I think sometimes men need to understand that, that this isn't just a battle for just women. We're also fighting for you because then if I can work and I have the right to go to school and have the right to vote, it would help your life in directly so but um yeah yeah but let's not make this just about feminism okay we've, so we've heard her if she did not understand what that person you said tweeted that had said then I, i'm not sure she will understand everything we've said on this table but we'll put her in our prayers also someone is saying that if you have um less friends as a woman then you would be a good wife that's some twitter user what do you think um benny i, I don't I, I'm trying, I don't, I don't, I'm not in a mind, you know, but I, I'm trying to understand, I want to try to understand that from this aspect, you know, like, the, the, the more, the more you limit the people you have in your circle as a married woman, just maybe the better your marriage can work. Because just as people, a human being. people, mm. will, people want to give you ad advices. Mm. Why this should not be this way. Why that would not be that way. There are many marriages today who hit the rocks because mm. they were living based on people's advice. Right. You're a different human being. You're going to have your own experiences, you know. So I think that's that's the angle that I want to believe she was coming from. You yeah. know what? If you limit the number of friendships you have, those should take advice from those who pry into your personal business. Um, maybe, I think I'll, maybe. I'll put it this you know. way. Is that it? I think I'll put it this way. <laughs> wow. You limit the people you discuss your marriage with. Mm. You cannot, you if you have... You generally lie. I mean, you. that's why I said even human beings, you don't mm. have, it doesn't have to just be applied to a married yeah. man or a married woman. If I'm dating someone and we have an issue, in fact, I should be able to sit with my partner to talk it out. Mm. But when you feel like it's too much and you want to offload, there should be one, two, maximum three people you can speak to. But when you start having like a mm. community meeting no, I, and I, I having I a conversation, yeah. A will say, no, do it like this. B. At mm. the end of the day, you're going to be confused yeah. as well. I, I don't have anything against women who have support system. Mm -hmm. But my, my problem is how truthful are your support systems to you? Because they should be able to call you out sometimes when you're on the wrong and say, you, you know what, also hey, know that girlfriend, truth. 
you were wrong here. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes it's, it's again, about what they have seen. And at the end of the day, you should. Okay, um, well, I didn't say it the way you said it, and I hope that's what she means. But the first thing I thought about was like, just leave women alone. Like, it's enough of what you want and what you think we should have and all that stuff and stuff. The only my issue with that was that it was screaming for me to remove my individuality. I need to have a life away from my partner. Yeah. I need to have friends that are not friends with my cop, my partner. I need to have friends and to have colleagues and I have to be able to network. So um, that's where I got it from. Like, mm, okay. uh, let's not do that but if you're talking about the way you guys have just talked about yeah. that of course you need them um, you know discrecy to be able to like filter filter out unnecessary um opinions but that's just head. Head. Mm -hmm. okay. but, but that was something very important she just said right now i mean mm. like maybe some maybe that's what does she take from this particular um topic you know you can't you can't just bury your life into somebody because you're dating yeah. them mm. they're, they're, they're separate individuals they have their life they should be able to live their life without you and when both of you come together you share whatever it is you have together but relationships are not that way yeah you feel once we're dating i'm sorry my life it was around yeah. you no it doesn't that way. no i mean I still, right. I still have my friends to hang out with. I still have things I need to do. Of course, Ben, you have friends to hang out yeah. with you. So we need to go. Thank you. Oh, stop. Gross. For watching. I remember <laughs> you can catch up on this conversation all over again by visiting our YouTube channel or subscribing our Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ben Yak and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Just stay with us. Thank you.